Well, welcome everyone to the very first Idea Spies conversation. Mm. Uh, I'm Lynn Wood and I'm the founder of Idea Spies and uh, the chief Idea Spy. And thanks so much to each and every one of you for joining. Now we've chosen industrial ideas for our first conversation amongst Idea Spies because so much is changing in that sector currently. As you'd all be aware, uh, there's a big change from mass production to local production, which starts to spin up a lot of opportunities for manufacturing in Australia and elsewhere around the world. This uh, change has been enabled by many new technologies, uh, including 3D printing. Now we're going to be talking about the opportunities today, as well as the ideas and innovations on idea spines. And uh, we're very by Maddie Cunningham, who is our advisory board member for Idea Spice. And it's going to be led by Michael Sharp, who is our industrial editor. Now, we want to give all of you an opportunity to participate because that's the purpose of having a conversation. So we've asked you beforehand to choose your favourite idea from Idea Spice to start this up. And uh, so if you could please include that in the chat line, um, that would be very, very helpful. Uh, you can see uh, the very impressive bios for, of Maddie and um, Michael in our, or on our About page for Idea Spice. So now over to you, Maddie, to start the conversation. Good morning, everyone. Well, if you can kick off and um, give us the intro on opportunities. Sure, and there's such a vast range of opportunities out there now because suddenly the whole world is talking about manufacturing and here in Australia everyone's saying what can we do here in Australia what can we make here and uh, for us at the Advanced Manufacturing Growth Centre uh, we're uh, co-funding projects with federal government support to uh, look at the transformation and uh, get technology into manufacturing and then look at those export opportunities because we say we'd much rather have a global audience for Australian made products in addition to you know the 25 million people we have here in Australia. And so a lot of our work has been around that and publishing research and then co-funding projects that can put that research into action. So I'd recommend you have a look at our website and Google the Advanced Manufacturing Growth Centre and you'll see a range of the works that we're doing there um, to show some of those case studies about how Australian manufacturing is transforming. Um, but I thought I might just talk about Industry 4.0 because a lot of the ideas that I've been posting on Idea Spies come from my visits and meeting business owners all around the country and walking the factory floor and seeing all this innovation going on and some of the great technology that we're able to then export to the world. Um, but really it goes back to, you know, industry 4.0 is what the tagline is. Um, but what is it? It's really the fourth industrial revolution. And so it's this digital transformation of manufacturing. So if you go back to industry one, that's really the first industrial revolution and it changed everything about the world, the whole society changed because of steam power. It's the industry one and we saw how it changed the world and uh, brought people off the land and, and just made the world different. Industry two or the second industrial revolution, think about Henry Ford and mass production. And at the time when that came about, another step change in the way the world operated, how we manufactured and uh, made things, um, people at the time said, what will happen to all these jobs? If we're going to streamline manufacturing uh, and do mass production, what will all the people do? And yet the smart companies innovated and developed new ideas into commercial outcomes. And those companies have expanded. So think about Ford today, operating globally, selling uh, world-class products all around the world. And the company continues to grow. So we know that uh, you know, similar talks happen today, right? Robotics and automation is going to take all the jobs. And yet I know from the companies that I deal with that the smart ideas that are coming uh, to fruition will transform those skill sets. And so today, today a manual handler is suddenly becoming a robotics technician and their, their job is more exciting and uh, safer because the robot can lift more. Uh, the quality of those products improve because of the automation process. And so people then beat a path to their door to buy a more quality, uh, higher valued product. This is the future for Australia. How can we create value and export globally. Uh, the third industrial revolution or industry 3.0, pretty much when I was at school, and uh, I vividly remember the teachers saying, 
you guys are going to have it so good with these computers. And there's this new thing coming called the internet. And we've got a participant coming in from Denver, uh, which is fantastic. Um, but who, who had even heard of Zoom prior to the crisis? But we've all adapted. We're all using this technology. Sometimes we forget to press the mute button, uh, but we're all learning and uh, this is driving transformation. And so Idea Spies is a platform and you can see it there on the screen. I've been able to publish so many various ideas in the industrial sector um, around so much activity happening in Australian manufacturing. And there's more support for, this, for the industry sector than ever before. It employs 10% of the Australian workforce. So there's some 1.3 million people working in manufacturing. Uh, and we say that it's a nation's capability. As Australia, what are we capable of making and exporting to the world and creating an income and creating value for Australia? And that talks about the Omni Tanker project that I was involved with. And it was terrific that just last month, that project uh, over 18 months came to fruition and the first chemical road tanker, so think a big semi-trailer, was exported from Western Sydney to Ohio in the US. And we're, we're honored to have uh, our United States ambassador uh, representing Australia, the Honorable Arthur Sinodinus, was able to launch that project for us. Uh, and in this instance, uh, it was a virtual launch. He was able to cut the ribbon over a Zoom call from the embassy in Washington to Ohio. Such is the times we're in. But I think that really shows the um, transformation that is underway in Australian manufacturing. There's so many ideas that we can continue to share. Uh, it's really been terrific to be part of this uh, new cohort that's really uh, going from strength to strength. Uh, certainly a, a great commitment from Lynn to really get this platform up and going. And uh, Maddie, the work that you've been able to do uh, to date is just terrific. So bringing people together like we are now, I think if we can do this on a more regular basis, I just think that would be great because the ideas won't change, it's the implementation. So think about now, here we are at Industry 4, the fourth industrial revolution, this digital transformation of manufacturing. We need those ideas to drive our country forward because as a country, we need to maintain our um, economic viability in a global environment. We need to make smart things like the cochlear ear implants or ResMed with their uh, you know, face masks and stuff that they do. Uh, one of the key projects that we've been able to achieve as an organization just in the last six months of the crisis was around the ventilators. So in early March, when we were just starting out, the federal government reached out to us and said, we, we believe we're going to need ventilators and who can we get to make them in Australia? So very quickly, we brought 30 local manufacturers together. Uh, most of them had not met each other before, but very good in their individual fields. So we had a company that could make the springs and another company that could make the gauges and so on and so forth. But very quickly, we brought that 30 uh, companies together as a local supply chain here in Australia. And as of yesterday, we've now produced 1,700 of those ventilators. And thankfully, they're going to the national medical stockpile. We don't need them, which is terrific. Uh, we've handled the, the pandemic uh, very well compared to most others. But now there's an opportunity now for those 30 companies to look at exporting this technology. High skilled jobs to create a very complex bit of equipment uh, in the med tech space that we can now export for value out of Australia. So there's some great ideas out there and uh, look forward to any questions you might have, but happy to engage and uh, through Lynn, always happy to uh, be contacted by any of the members of Idea Spies. So thanks for the opportunity today, Maddie. Thanks so much, Michael. Um, before we kick off um, to the group discussion, I thought, um, Michael, maybe you could tell us a bit more about one of the ideas you've uh, posted on Gilmore Space. Absolutely. So yeah. I was talking with Adam Gilmore yesterday. If you'd like to Google, or you can look up the idea, right? So there's yeah. uh, rock, rocket fuel technology. So Gilmore Space are building um, carbon composite uh, tanks and looking at uh, hydrogen for rocket uh, propulsion. So I think um, there it is. Space rocket tanks into orbit. And so that's Gilmore Space Technologies, a company based in Brisbane. Uh, that are developing world-class, world-first technology uh, and launch capabilities to launch satellites into space. They're now actively part of the NASA Moon to Mars mission. So again, high-valued, high-skilled jobs here in Australia uh, being able to export, in this case, out of this world. And uh, I just think that's the opportunity. And of course, now with the new Australian Space Agency, there's new levels of commitment uh, to driving Australian ingenuity uh, to take on the world. 
So yeah, that's a good one there, Matty. Yeah, so one of the other ideas we have there is um, the flying cars. So mm. you might pull that up, Lynn. But the flying cars is a, a project we've been supporting um, by a company called AMSL Aero. And they're developing um, the flying car technology here in New South Wales, in Australia. And they've just signed an agreement with the New South Wales state government. And uh, so there's new technology here happening in Australia. I think we've got a great uh, look at the platform of Ideaspires where you can see there's actually a bit of a movement on. So when you put those keywords in there, you're seeing several projects come up at once around flying cars. And we know that there's a new um, technology with Uber Flight uh, happening with, uh, at Melbourne Airport. So the ability to go from the Melbourne CBD out to the airport directly in a flying car. Um, is, is well underway. This technology is already happening. But if Australia can latch onto it and develop the technology to go with it, uh, that'll put us up there with the best. Perfectus Algae uh, Manufacturing Venture. And that is a good one, Marcella. That's um, uh, a good point I might raise there, Matty, around the opportunities because there's grants from both state and federal government here in Australia to support those sort of projects. And, and that's one of them uh, around... Um, developing high protein uh, materials. Um, but there's sort of government grants out there that are from CSIRO. Uh, there's opportunities with defense funding. We've got the largest defense budget in our nation's history, some $270 billion. So if you've got some ideas around defense projects, you should be posting them on Idea Spies because we know there's people using the Idea Spies platform to, to search out all the best ideas. And defense is one of those key markets where if we can build the capability stronger here in Australia, um, that just makes us a stronger nation, of course. It interests me because uh, Dream Launch is affiliated with a polymer. Uh, well, the MD is a polymer engineer and uh, very interested in recycled plastics, full stop. And in fact, so someone I invited today can talk about her product, uh, Shannon, uh, which is uh, about a, uh, a, what would you say, a, a, a milk bottle that instantly cleans itself. And there's a lot of product innovation around plastic bottles going on. And um, it looks like, you know, it's a practical solution that's already happening, which is what, it, what appealed to me because a lot of the other ideas are prototypes. Um, yeah. So on that one, Alex, there's a new fund out called the, uh, uh, the it's the Recycling Modernisation Fund. And that's uh, been kicked off by the Australian Federal Government. But as I understand it, each of the state governments will co-fund into the Recycling Modernisation Fund, and that will help to back projects like you've described. Um, so I'm sure you can um, have a look at that uh, opportunity, because it's, only, it's just underway as we speak. Yeah, we have a number of clients who come to us for prototypes in that space, so that's a good one to know about. Okay, great. Um, Marcella, you wanted to make a comment on the algae manufacturing and we know that um, sustainable food, like growing food sustainably in the future is going to be one of the biggest challenges for the earth. And um, this could be a solution for that. I, I had a bit of fun with that one too, Marcella, because I, I, the title I chose there, you know, a blooming great idea. Yes. I, I, just, I think that's um, um, you know, very apt because it's certainly some great technology and some great minds yeah. working on that project. So yeah. you, you're just, bang on. Yeah. yeah it's, it, I just love that it's a foundation for other things. So it's blooming a whole new industry. Yeah, or many industries yes. actually. This is right. And so we need to be, you know, supporting these things which are gonna support and grow all sorts of industries for again, sustainable food and medicine about, and yeah, yeah, everything. All those things, you know, it doesn't matter where you go in the world, as Aussies, we're trusted. Uh, Australia, we have this great brand that we all share. Um, you know, if it says made in Australia or uh, Australian engineering, people trust Australia. And so we have this great opportunity as a nation to be able to really mm. leverage that brand and develop this Australian technology. And Again, you're a, right. That's evidenced by this one that I actually posted today uh, was in the CSIRO newsletter. Um, and it goes along with what you're saying, Marcella. New food products from vegetable waste. So they've mm. discovered a new powder now. Uh, there are lots of powders around, but this is interesting because it uses the vegetable waste. Yeah. Mm. And it's an Australian company, um, Fresh Select. Grant opportunity through the New South Wales State Government. They've just announced the Regional Job Creation Fund. And so that's for um, opportunities outside of the major cities. 
uh, for people to engage with and look at uh, growing local jobs in our regions, but it can be across any sort of industry. Um, so that's just come out last week. So you might want to look at that for uh, co-funding of a project or an idea that you might have. Um, but there's going to be more and more um, funding support for manufacturing, which is just terrific news. What a dream launch is all about is product innovation and product development. And we have great people in our product innovation community like Shannon doing some amazing uh, implementation of ideas. Fantastic. Thanks so much for the introduction. Um, I've actually just posted up <laughs> my product on, on the platform so you can actually see it now. It's uh, called Pronto Bottle. It's actually a, a self-sterilizing bottle. And the idea is it's, it's a baby bottle that means that parents no longer actually have to carry around multiple baby bottles with them. Yeah, that's the one there. Mm -hmm. um, and it also means that um, you're reducing the amount of plastic bottles that are going back to landfill because you've only got one bottle uh, to purchase. It sterilizes itself. It can be reused through multiple babies. So you're having a massive impact on the amount of uh, product that's going back to landfill. And the idea with this as well is that we'll encourage customers to actually send that product back to us at the end of its use, meaning we can create a closed loop system whereby we're recycling the materials into new product as well. So that's, that's basically our product um, pronto that we're working on at the moment. So I love the plant-based uh, plastic idea as well. So it was fantastic, great find. So I initially designed it myself. My background's actually in 3D and entrepreneurship. So I actually discovered the problem when I had my daughter, but I actually went out and researched. I actually spoke to a uh, hundred parents. I interviewed them and just said, you know, how are you traveling with your baby? And the biggest pain points there were for parents that were doing the bottle feeding process. So the amount of time they were spending actually washing and sterilizing and prepping all of those bottles. The fact that they were carrying, you know, five or six of those pre-filled bottles in their bag meant they were carrying like two, two mm -hmm. kilos with them as well because of all that weight. Um, and from that, what I, I sort of thought of was, you know, if the ultimate thing could exist, would it be possible for parents to travel with one bottle and would it be possible to travel with that bottle empty? So you could literally prepare a bottle any way you could find drinkable water. So that bottle can be carried empty. And if you're at the cafe or a library, um, in the park, anywhere you can find drinkable tap water, you can fill that bottle with it, press the button, and it sterilizes itself and the water at the same time. So no longer do you have to do all of that process at home. Um, and then from that point, I basically brought on a design team to actually further that design and to actually create the product that we're looking at today. Yeah. Actually fundraising for it at the moment as well. So we've just launched a virtual equity crowdfunding campaign to actually see us through the next stages to actually get us to manufacturing. Because something we found that was difficult was raising funds for an early stage hardware product in Australia has been nigh impossible. It's been very, very difficult. So that's, that's kind of the thing we're going into now, which is fantastic. So yeah, I'll post Does a link in there. There's another idea that I posted, which might be helpful to you, Shannon, mm -hmm. uh, the sea bin project. Yes, I actually find it. I was, I'm actually an investor in that. I saw them pop up Great. on virtual. They're fantastic. I love their product. So I think the sea bin project is similar to, in the way that you're talking about, you know, crowdfunding and having a, having a need and, um, mm. and meeting that need. But uh, certainly those yeah. guys, keep, they keep kicking goals, which is really good. And that's one of our latest projects that we've been able to co-fund mm. around the reshoring of their manufacturing to bring that manufacturing to Australia to develop the next generation of sea bins. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. I've been watching their project from the very beginning. I've been very intrigued as to the work they're doing because I'm a bit of a, <laughs> as you can tell, a bit of an eco nut myself. So I just this love good. this stuff. Yeah. But again, you can see how powerful this platform is, you know, to be able to mm. share ideas like we are and talking as we mm. are now. I, I love to be doing this on a regular basis, Lynn. And you'll notice that all the, all the ideas are expressed in a hundred words or less with a link for more information. And that's a discipline. It's a real discipline to spell out what's positive in these ideas, what they do, why they're clever, why we should talk about them. So the posts don't go into who the founders are or um, why it was founded. Uh, it's just, what is the idea? So, you know, everyone's busy. They can just uh, check what uh, the idea is that they're interested in. Uh, they can post it or they look they can look for ones that might be similar to them. Uh, thank you, Maddie. <clears throat> and more to Michael. Uh, you talked about Brand Australia and how we're known globally. And our group takes a lot of delegations offshore. We always try and promote Australian innovation. And people just don't get it. 
and they don't associate us, yes, with food and tourism, etc. So my question, I'll come to it in a second, is how do we get that message out? You know, we tell them we invented Wi-Fi, you know, cochlea, black box, oh, that sort of arouses. But everything you've shown, everything that Lynn and Maddie have on Idea Spy is about incredible innovation. Most of it goes overseas to global markets, so we don't know the brands, we don't see them. So how do we take everything we've heard about here, everything on Idea Spice, and build it into that brand Australia that people think, aha, you guys do innovation. Vision space too. Um, Johnny, we've got to get that story out, as you say, and uh, the more we can talk about manufacturing, that's why I'm so excited this year, you know, you know, never waste a crisis. So certainly during this process, more and more people are talking about manufacturing. Mm. We actually launched a new platform called Manufacturing Academy. And so I was able to go around the country late last year and interview our members. And so on the Manufacturing Academy site, they're sharing their own stories about how they're transforming their business today. So it's real world experience uh, being shared by you know, business owners doing their thing right now. But when it comes to the idea spies, you know, that's the beauty of this platform is I'll, I've got my iPhone with me. I'll take a photo of what they're doing and then I post it and say, look at this for an idea. The chemical road tanker is manufactured in Western Sydney. Um, it's lightweight because it's made of composite materials. It was shipped over to Ohio and put onto a, a trailer manufacturer in Ohio. And so now it's on the highways across the US. And so the, the slogan they used was made in Australia and on the road in, in the USA. So, you know, it's talking about collaboration, not just amongst companies, but again, amongst nations. As you know, we'd love to have idea spies in museums mm. around Australia because idea spies can be online. I've seen online displays in museums. Uh, and it could be showcasing all the ideas so the kids see them, for example. Mm. Mm. Because we'd love to get into the education system, but we can't because it's so rigid, you know, because the, the, um, the whole platform for education, the, the, all the schemes are uh, planned years in advance. But we could in museums, that would be terrific. Mm. And it could be an online interactive display that we could do that sh could show the kids because everybody currently is being swamped with negative news. Yeah. And we have so much positive news that we can share mm -hmm. about a better future. And Alex, you must have people coming to your organisation with new ideas all the time, right? Yeah, well, that's the whole idea of uh, Dream Launch. Um, and uh, we're very much at that entrepreneur, inventor, founder space. Uh, although we do have existing businesses like Neura, who you may have heard of, the um, headphones company, come to us as well for... Um, you know, uh, optimizing their manufacturing process and their innovation um, protocols. But uh, as far as DreamWatch goes, yeah, very much so. Um, we've got uh, things like someone who's designed a smart crib, looking for investors at the moment. I think Shannon knows the fellow. And basically, um, you can, with an IoT uh, mechanism, literally raise the base of the crib um upwards and instead of having to lift the baby out of the crib the baby comes to you okay. so that's gone from design and now into prototyping and then the next stage we help with is actually designed for manufacturing and manufacturing we've also so again, and, sorry i was gonna say again any of those companies you're dealing with are welcome to join amgc because it's completely free but it's just trying to build those um networks to help build local supply chains so, I mean, if you, if you saw value in that, just reach out to me at any time. You know, with the pandemic, we've had, we've had such a roller coaster ride. And so that is changing a lot of, of ways everybody's doing everything from um, the selling of beef. You know, we have a lot of ranches here. Um, sustainability is, is a huge issue. It's going to be really big in California, obviously. And to sustain a population that's the size of California as well. Yeah. We had some great technology. There's an idea on there, Lynn, if you'd like to look it up. It was around the wine cap technology. Uh, uh -huh. a oh. startup, startup company called Seller, C-E-L-L-R. Uh, and Seller have developed with blockchain technology uh, where they can track where the wine has come from. So you'll get other countries that might rebrand certain yeah. wines and steal IP and steel brands like Penfolds, for example. And mm -hmm. uh, with this technology um, and blockchain, they put it into the 
the uh, the cork or the screw cap lid. Well, this is blockchain technology where they can track the wine from the vineyard all the way through to the final customer. And so they get that trust factor um, and the wineries are prepared to pay a premium to use that technology in the wine cap um, so that they can uh, guarantee provenance. In Australian manufacturing, is if you look at countries like Germany, they mm -hmm. add value, they make things. And so in Australia, we dig, stuff, we dig stuff out of the ground and we sell that offshore. And so one of the projects we did was um, uh, with a company called Volgren to make lightweight bus chassis. And so that's using a material that's dug out of the ground in New South Wales called Scandium. It's a rare earth material, but developed a new metal alloy, which is 30% lighter than aluminium. And so they're looking to use that as a new bus chassis, which they can then export all around the world. So rather than just digging Scandium out of the ground and putting it on a ship at Newcastle, we're actually going to create value here in Australia, create mm -hmm. higher skilled local jobs, which just makes a country like Australia better off. And well, so you know, I, I, I think that one place where, where you might find advantages, um, and I think Lynn, you were on a, a discussion with this with Victor Purton, is that our, our uh, relationships with China have really changed as a result of this pandemic. And so when you go into the stores here, there are things that you'll find just like you did before the pandemic, but there's a lot of things that we are missing in our stores as a result of this. And so, um, you know, Australia has some opportunities to jump in there as well as India and relationships with India and Australia and Australia with America. And I see Australia becoming a much stronger partner in terms of trade and manufacturing and all those kinds of things. Uh, so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of opportunity here. And um, I really like the idea, Lynn, about the TV mm -hmm. uh, show, mm -hmm. um, showing off people or having an interaction between groups of uh, investors here, mm -hmm. uh, people that could use those products as, and, and the things that are coming out of Australia. I think that's an excellent idea. Excellent. Yep. Well, it was, we actually put it on Idea Spies and it was very, very popular. So a lot of people like it. It's just mm -hmm. finding the funding for it. Um, and uh, I actually went through the process of uh, getting um, a leading uh, TV production company to, to look at a pilot. So I've got all the costings on doing it. Uh, it's just finding the funding. But that's mm -hmm. the case with so many of these innovations, yeah, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I did a talk yesterday about access to capital and, you know, so whether you're a startup business or a long established business, you, you're always looking for that capital injection to take that idea and commercialize it. Uh, it's not always easy, um, but there are various grants out there available to companies. And uh, if anyone wants to reach out to me, feel free, you know, through Lynn and, and Maddie, um, we're happy to support you. Uh, but there will be even more coming from manufacturing because that's how we're going to, you know, come out of this COVID crisis and, Really, I think we have the opportunity now to put Australia on a whole new level. Like the streaming production now and in another area. And so some of the, the, uh, the producers I'm working with, um, it might be the right time again if, if you hit a brick wall with that other yep. path that you went to make an introduction and just uh, see where it goes. Okay, that'd be terrific. That'd be great. Very happy to explore any ideas, yeah? There's so many good ideas out there. You see a show like The Block where they are building a house and all the works are going there. But we have so many factories around Australia that are doing some great things. And I think, you know, to be able to show people what's going yeah. on, we're not talking about smokestacks anymore. This is not our grandfather's manufacturing age. This is advanced manufacturing and it's happening today yeah. in Australia. There's so much to show. We were talking about supply chains and not being able to get product out of China. <clears throat> Perfect opportunity where the block has had to pivot and go locally to source materials uh, to complete the building works in the show. Sure. Is I like um, that's posted in industrial is on uh, submarines. The mm. Naval Group, which is a US, um, a US uh, firm, has uh, agreed to fund. I think it's seventy, a hundred million dollars, um, based out of Adelaide, uh, to deliver our next fleet of submarines um, in twenty thirty, um, with the last uh, submarine fleet um, being delivered in twenty fifty. Um, this shows a strong collaboration between Australia and the US in joining forces, um, obviously for Australia, supporting hundreds of jobs um, and a clear commitment to the Australian industry um, for increasing manufacturing capability in Australia. 
um, for local jobs um, over the next uh, two decades. Technology going on in robotics welding. Um, so right now, Australia is leading the world in robotics welding. Uh, there's a group coming out of the University of Wollongong that are a great research team, but developing the algorithms and technology to drive those robots. And so when you think of welding, uh, it's again, not our grandfather's age of welding and technology. Pretty much the new skills you're looking for is if, if you can operate a PlayStation, you could operate a robotics welding machine. And so this is where Australia can really benefit. And one of our other events, we were talking about, like Lynn was talking about the TV uh, potential opportunity is an, an event um, with our partner Tankstream Labs will be hosting event um, in the first half of next year, bringing ideas to life. Um, so watch out for that for next year. Over to you, Lynn, to close. Well, thank you very much. I think uh, we've got some good actions out of this. Uh, obviously, as Maddie said, we want you to share the ideas and post the ideas. So. Uh, we cover as many as possible. Uh, and also, uh, just as you mentioned, Johnny, that we need to get the message out more that there is a positive future and we can help make it happen. And uh, so anybody can thank you, John, uh, for your suggestion about the TV idea. Any of these ideas to get the message out, we'd, we'd really love to hear.